you know, that really hurt when they said what they said and when they did what they did, when they put me through what they put me through. You know, if I can just be honest with you, the reason why I don't get it right most of the time and the reason why I don't know how to do a lot of things is because of what they did and it's because of what they said. If it wasn't for what they did and it wasn't for what they said, I would be so farther along than what I am. And don't ask me about forgiveness because yes, I forgave them, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't change what they did and what they said. Because if it wasn't for what they did and what they said, I would be so farther along. I wouldn't have all these problems. It's because of what they did. It's because of what they said. Well, that was pretty intense. But today we're talking about people that have the victim mentality or a victim spirit that's demonizing their minds. It is probably one of the worst types of spirits that a person can be privy to. It, it literally causes people to regress. Yes, regress. That means that you stop growing. Ooh, you stop maturing if you're a Christian, if you have that spirit. And it usually doesn't like to take responsibility. It causes people, rather, to not like to take responsibility for their own life. You could be 50 years old and saying that if mama had done it this way and daddy had done it that way, I would, I would have this or I would have that. People that carry the spirit of victimization or a victim spirit stop progressing in their minds. They stop progressing in their souls. And they start telling themselves that their trauma, you know, whatever they've gone through, that becomes their crutch. Oh, I, I don't have uh, a house or I don't have a good marriage. I don't have um, a good career. I, whatever it is, I don't have it because of something somebody did to me. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that people don't go through things. I'm not saying that we don't get hurt in life, that we don't get victimized by people. There's a lot of us that if we were going to be honest, somebody has said something, somebody has done something that they shouldn't have that caused us some sort of oppression or some some type of pain. If there's somebody on the face of this earth that can say they've never been through anything, nobody ever harmed them, then I've never met them. Because most of the people that I have met, most of the people that I know have been through something, some type of deep pain, some type of hurt. Somebody has victimized them in some type of way. The difference is, is that some of us, by the grace of God, move on. We forgive. We get healed, we get delivered, and we get set free. And then there's others who don't know how to do that because they're too busy holding on to what the Holy Spirit said to me was familiar bondage. If you've never heard of familiar bondage, you're going to hear about it today. It is a bondage where you've carried it for so long, you've used it as your crutch so that when something doesn't turn out the way that you want it to, or when you get what I would call negative attention from people because they can see something that you haven't done right and they maybe bring it up to you, you go back to your trauma or the people who, who you call your victimizers and you say, well, I could have done it if it hadn't been for them. In other words, the person who oppressed you, the person who victimized you becomes your crutch. They, they, they become your reason for why you can't do things. I, I, I'm not saying that you don't have a right to feel some kind of way if someone wronged you. Of course you do. You're going to feel some kind of way if somebody wronged you. But what I'm saying to every child of God is that you must come to a place of maturity and understanding and wisdom and have the desire to be set free from a spirit of victimization or a victim spirit, victim mentality, if you will. Because all it's going to do is hold you back. It's rooted in fear. It's rooted in pride and trauma. That's why I said, if, you, if, you, if you've been exposed to that spirit, if that door has been opened up, 
then you need to be doing everything you can to make sure that that door gets closed. And I'm going to pray today for those of you who are wise enough and courageous enough to stand up and say, that's me. I've been affected by that spirit. We'll do that at the end of this uh, kingdom teaching. Because it takes a person who's courageous. It takes a person who's bold. It takes a person who's honest to say, yes, I was hurt by those people. I was hurt by that person, this situation, but I will not allow it to lead me in my life. And let me just say this, because this could be like a three or four part series if I chose to, to do that. I don't know that I will do that though, because I don't know that that's necessary. I think that today I could probably sum up the greater part of what needs to be summed up you know, if the Holy Spirit leads me to do this in a series, I will. But I don't know that that, like I said, I don't know if that's necessary. But I want to say this. The signs of a person having, uh, being controlled by a spirit of, a victim spirit is this. You don't take responsibility for your own actions. It's always somebody else's fault. Now, I just want to give you a scenario, a good example of this. First of all, let's think about a, a young man who's raised by um, parents who are thieves. And so when he goes into whatever store he goes into with his parents, they're always stealing. They were always stealing something when he was a child. Everywhere they went, there was always they always stole something. Even if they just went to visit people, they would always try to steal something. They were thieves, okay? So now he grows up. And he graduates it and he takes it to maybe mom and dad. They went into little grocery stores, mom and pop stores, family members' homes. And they were still from those places. Okay. But now let's just call him Charlie. Charlie is now an adult. And Charlie is not interested in the little grocery stores and the mom and pop stores and going into his family's homes and stealing little trinkets here and there. That's not good enough for Charlie. No, no, no. Charlie says, I'm going to hit the national, the first national bank. Charlie's like, okay, that they did, they did the little small time stuff, but I'm going to take it to another level. I'm, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to hit up a bank. I'm going to do it the right way. That's, that's his, that's his thinking, right? Okay. Now, Charlie robs this, this bank. Okay. And when Charlie gets caught, because Charlie gets caught after he robs the bank. If Charlie says, oh, well, you know, my mom and dad, they taught me how to do it. When he comes before the judge, if that's his story, oh, they, you know, you, you know, how do you plead? Oh, I'm, I'm not guilty. Because, see, I might have robbed the bank, but it was my mama and my daddy who taught me how to do it. Say what? I said my mama and my daddy, they taught me how to rob banks. So why don't you go and arrest them? Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing this. The judge is not going to drop the charges and say, and drop the case and say, okay, let's just go and arrest his parents because it looks like he was abused as a child. He was taught the wrong things as a child. No, Charlie's going up the river, okay? His parents, if you know, if they're still alive, they're going to still go on about their lives. Now, if they go and rob First National Bank, then they're going to go up the river with Charlie. But no, Charlie is going to do his time because Charlie committed the crime. Now, I use that scenario, I use that example because it's, it's a good example to use when you're thinking about people that have been victimized. Was Charlie victimized by his parents? Of course he was. Nobody should be teaching their child to be a thief. But when Charlie became an adult, nobody was holding a gun to his head and saying, go rob people. When he became an adult, he began to rob people because he chose to. And if someone has harmed you and you're an adult, you need to seek the help that you need. And, and the help that you need, you know, listen, I don't say this very often. But it may be more than someone just praying for you. Sometimes it requires a lot of counseling, even fasting. 
to break these strongholds off of you. But whatever you need in order to be set free from what mama did or what daddy did or grandma or grandpa or the neighbors or those people that I used to work with or my husband or my wife or my children or whoever, make sure you get healed. Make sure you get delivered from that. Make sure that whatever you do, you forgive. Because none of us, none of us is above needing forgiveness. So we all need, as, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, we all need to forgive because we're going, we've all done something and we're going to, to do things that's require that's going to require that we forgive. That's why I said one of the things that that victim spirit is rooted in is pride. Because you keep telling yourself you didn't deserve it. And to some degree, you might even feel like you were too good for that. That's why you can't forgive them and move on. And, and, and like I said, I'm not saying that people haven't gone through stuff. I'm not trying to demean or belittle people and make it seem like if you've been traumatized in your life, just get over it. I'm not, no. What I'm saying is, is that you owe it to yourself to seek the deliverance and the healing that you need so that you can gain the victory in your life and you don't have to live the rest of your life using what somebody has done to you as a crutch. Whether you like it or not, this life was given to you. It was given to you. So you are responsible for the decisions that you make. You know, I had to tell somebody that about a year ago, actually, because they had went out and committed adultery. And and I remember him saying to me, well, my daddy did it. He was like, you know, I, I, I learned from the best. Like he's, he didn't say it the way I'm saying it, but it's like he was saying, I learned it from the best. He did it. So since he did it, I did it. Now, the Bible says the sins of the father are visited upon the children, okay? Granted. Now, does the Bible say that because of that, that you can go do what daddy did and God won't deal with you about it? No, it doesn't say that. Just like daddy has to be responsible, if daddy has committed adultery, guess what? You have to be responsible for that decision that you made to do it. You must be accountable. And people that carry the victim spirit they usually aren't. That's one of the ways you'll know is because they become regressed, very childlike, very immature in decision-making times. Overall, basically, they're easily upset. They easily throw tantrums if something doesn't go their way. Very regressed as, a, as an adult. I'm not really talking about kids. I'm talking about adults now, obviously. But they become like child, like they become childlike, sorry, in the way they express themselves and how they deal with things. Because they're having pity parties on a daily basis and telling themselves that they have a right to do it. I just want to read you, I want to read you this verse from 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word has no place in our lives. So the same reason why you need to forgive is the same reason why the person that harmed you or hurt you or oppressed you needs to also ask for forgiveness. And I also want to say this. Just because someone didn't come to you and apologize for something that they said or they did to you, it doesn't mean that they haven't asked God to forgive them. The Bible doesn't tell us to apologize. The Bible doesn't tell us to apologize. It tells us to repent. That means to ask for forgiveness. It means to not go back and do it again. It doesn't mean to just be sorry for what you've done. It means to not to be, yes, to be uh, sorry for what you've done. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to set you free from it and don't go back and do it again. 
And so the same can be said of the person who was victimized. Forgive me because I've held this unforgiveness for, for so long and let me forgive this person or persons so I can go on with my life. Because let me just say this to you. The One of the worst things that could happen to someone who's been victimized is that they have a hard time forgiving the person who hurt them. But that person comes to a place where they understand that they need to ask for forgiveness. They ask for forgiveness and God does that. And then they go on with their lives. Because remember, when you ask God for forgiveness, not only does God forgive you, he'll set you free from whatever you've done. He'll heal you, deliver you, set you free. He doesn't remember that anymore. So if I'm remembering something that someone did to me, that's on me. That means I'm still in bondage. It doesn't mean they're in bondage. It means I'm in bondage. So I want you to remember that. Forgiveness is a beautiful thing. And it sets you free. That's the first step when it comes to that victim spirit is for you to make a decision that you want to be free from it. Because until you do, you will never be free. And you will continue in that root of pride and unforgiveness and trauma. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you today and I lift up the people watching this video who are being victimized by that spirit of with that victim mentality they've been oppressed they've been traumatized now i pray that you will set them free in their minds give them the wisdom give them the understanding give them the guidance to know how that they can be tr com completely set free if it's counsel bless them to know who to go to and how to do it mm -hmm. if it's fasting give them the strength and the understanding mm -hmm. and the ability mm -hmm. to fast father mm -hmm. i pray right now that whatever they need in this moment, whatever they need in their lives that's going to set them free from that victim mentality that's rooted in pride, rooted in unforgiveness and trauma, that they will be set free from them in the name of Jesus. I cancel the assignment of the spirit of the victim. I cancel the assignment and I sever the roots of pride, unforgiveness and trauma in their lives. And I categorize those roots with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now be set free in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. So I pray right now that you will get what you need and that you will desire to be set. That you will desire to be set free. Because the first step in deliverance is to desire for that spirit to no longer have the control over you or in you. Now I hope this message will bless you. And I pray that you will go forward that you'll go forward and that you will do and live a life of abundance. Forgive and go forward and be blessed apart from what someone else has done. Live your best life in Jesus' name.